Hey guys, Cam here from PocketLint and iOS 11 is finally here. And as with any new iPhone software, there's plenty to sink your teeth into. Here are my top tips and tricks to get you started with the new iPhone software. Now the first lot are going to be all to do with the new control center and number one is adding controls. It's probably the most useful thing you can do. To add controls to control center, head to settings, control center and then customize controls. Here you can add any controls by tapping the green plus icon or removing by tapping the red minus icon. You can also reorder by long pressing the list icon on the right of any option and then dragging it up or down the list. Number two is activating night shift. Now night shift makes your screen a little bit more warm, a little bit orange. And to activate it, you open up control center, force press the light slider. This now fills the screen and gives you the night shift button beneath the slider. Tap this and it filters out the blue light giving you an orangey yellow screen to help your eyes relax at night time. Number three is screen recording. Now if you want to record everything you do on your phone make sure you've added the screen recording control to control center. Then you open it up, tap the icon that looks like a small solid circle inside a thin white ring and it starts to record. Tap it again to stop and it saves automatically in your photos gallery. Number four is adjusting the torch brightness. If you open up control center, force press the torch icon and now you can slide up and down on the giant slider on the screen to adjust the brightness. Number five is airdrop. Now by default, the connectivity controls in control center only show four primary options. If you force press this control though, you get to access airdrop and personal hotspot too. Tap airdrop and then choose how visible you want it to be. Moving away from control center into a more key user interface, the keyboard. You can switch it to one hand typing and to do this, you just open up the keyboard, long press the emoji key and choose either the left or right one handed typing icon. If you want to switch back to full size, just tap the arrow on the side of the display. You can also activate it by going into settings, general, keyboard and then choosing the one handed keyboard option. Next up is switching between live photo modes. Now to get access to the new live photo effects, make sure you have live photo switched on in the camera app and snap your picture. Then go to your camera roll in photos and swipe up on any photo that you want to change. Now you'll get to choose between four different live photo modes. Three of them are new. Next tip is getting to older notifications. Go to your lock screen either by locking the phone or swiping down from the top, then swipe up to reveal earlier notifications that you may have already dismissed from your lock screen. To clear them all, if you want to clear them, you just press and hold the little X in the corner and hit clear all notifications. One of the big new features is do not disturb while driving. Now if you want to customize how this comes on, go to settings, do not disturb and scroll to the bottom. Here you can switch it to go on manually or when connected to car Bluetooth as well as customize the auto reply message that sends and who you want to send it to. You can also add a control to control center and just activate it manually from there. Next up is marking up a screenshot. Now if you take a screenshot as normal, then tap the little image that appears in the left corner. Now you have the ability to draw, scribble, highlight and write all over it, or just crop it and then save it to your photo gallery. And lastly is getting to indoor maps. Now some buildings, big ones mostly like airports, have now got indoor mapping. So if you go to Philadelphia International Airport for example, you can just pinch to zoom in and you've got an indoor map. Then press the number on the side to choose which level of that building you want a map for. Now of course these aren't all the things you can do with iOS. Check out the link in the description. There's a much more in-depth written article showing you lots more things that you can do with iOS 11. I've been Cam. I'm at CamBunton on Twitter. I'll see you again soon.